Modern Rivals has been out for a little over a week now, and whether or not it's better than Overwatch is up for debate. But one thing I can say for sure is, I'm having a ton of fun. Okay, rocket on point, rocket on point. Caught it! Oh my god, that was a crazy tackle. Oh my god, I tackled the storm off point. I'm Groot, I'm Groot. Oh my god, that was a crazy combo. <laughs> Of course, there's the novelty of it being a brand new game. People don't know what is and isn't good, what synergies do and don't work, just how the game is played in general. But from first impressions, while it is very messy, this is the most fun I've had with the hero-esque shooter since the launch of Overwatch 1. I wasn't able to play the first alpha test, so I could only gauge it from watching other streamers and content creators play it instead. At first glance, while I liked the art style Marvel Rivals was going for, the game looked a little rough visually. Of course, this was only the alpha, so it gets a bit of a pass on that. Gameplay-wise, I had no idea what was going on 90% of the time, but that just comes with the territory of a brand new game with the many unique characters existing on the screen at the same time. The gameplay looked very chaotic and didn't seem like there was much weight to landing shots and abilities on the enemy. It felt very floaty, for lack of a better term. It looked like swinging a weapon against an enemy in Dark Souls that didn't flinch and gave me the impression that the feedback was very minimal and unrewarding. Again, this was entirely based on me watching others play the game and without any hands-on experience myself. The reception from many of those who actually played the game, however, was exceptionally high, many proclaiming that it felt much better than Overwatch already. I'm someone who's very critical of Overwatch, but hearing those claims during a closed alpha had me very skeptical. Despite my issues with the game, Overwatch's gameplay is still among one of the best on the market. Balance issues aside, the characters themselves for the most part feel very rewarding and satisfying when you play as them. Whether it be landing shots and abilities on Ana, the movement on Lucio, or just crazy mobility from Doomfist. Overwatch's characters felt great to play as, and from watching gameplay of Marvel Rivals, seeing players making such bold claims of being better than Overwatch had me very doubtful. Finally, with the closed beta testing available for sign up, I was able to get access to the second play test to try the game out for myself. The game looked a bit better from the alpha testing, and it was much easier on the eyes. The game definitely isn't balanced, but each and every character had different levels of expression and identity that made them all unique and fun to play. Whether it be pulling crazy resets on Black Panther, punching people to death on Hulk, or teleporting between clones on Loki, every character brings something unique and interactive to the table, and Marvel Rivals isn't afraid of making things wacky. And most importantly, it's an even-numbered format. Overwatch has arguably been one of the best hero-based FPS games in terms of polish and how good the game feels to play. Until now. Now I will say, I don't think Marvel Rivals will be an Overwatch killer like many people claim it to be. But it doesn't have to. It only needs to be good enough in order to compete in the same genre, so that it encourages other games in the same space to learn and improve from each other. It may not be as polished, especially since it's only in the beta. But seeing how much Marvel Rivals has to offer already before its official launch puts its potential growth leagues above Overwatch 2. Right now, Marvel Rivals already has a competitive mode, replay system, a hero van system, and an in-game tournament system. Features that took Overwatch years to implement or still don't even have to this day. If this is where Marvel Rivals will be starting before its official release, I'd be very nervous if I were Overwatch. People are already judging the game as if it's already out, and that's kind of a good thing because that just goes to show how high the bar has been set and it's already exceeding expectations people have for the game, myself included. Aside from the obvious fact that it is 6v6, Marvel Rivals also does not limit the number of players per role, the roles being Vanguard for tank, Duelist for DPS, and Strategist for support. It's still a bit early to tell, but I hope that the game does not go down the route of having to switch to roll lock like Overwatch. At the moment, you can get away with team compositions consisting of more than two of a certain role, and still find success because there's a lot of drawback for running these compositions. However, I will say that the sustainability through healing is starting to show itself as being very powerful. I haven't run into it too often, but the times where I've gone against triple support comps, they have been very difficult to overcome, if not impossible. The issue being that healing in this game is very easy to do. Most of the characters heal through spamming one or two abilities. When there's only two support characters, this isn't as big of an issue. But the amount of healing on top of the many invulnerabilities and res abilities is beginning to feel quite frustrating to play against. I will say, however, that the invulns and reses are a lot less frustrating in this game than in Overwatch but I still think some of these abilities need to be tuned down a bit. Adam Warlock being the biggest offender in my opinion. 
Before I go into why he's so powerful, I want to first explain a unique feature the game has, and that's the built-in team synergy system. At the moment, when you pair up certain characters on the same team, they will benefit from either a bonus passive ability or an entire new ability altogether. For example, when Venom is teamed up with Spider-Man or Penny Parker, Venom will receive an extra 150 HP, but Spider-Man and Penny will receive an additional ability in which they can channel the symbiote, creating an area of damage and knockback from them on a 30 second cooldown. Now, going back to Adam Warlock, if he is teamed up with either Mantis or Star-Lord, those two characters are able to fly around as a specter to a safe location and res themselves. Adam Warlock's ultimate is essentially Mercy's old mass res, although it is not an insta-cast and brings his allies back at low health, so you have to heal them quickly or else you waste your ultimate. Adam Warlock himself also has a self res ability that's on a 2 minute cooldown. The ultimate is fine, but the ability to give other teammates self res is a bit obnoxious. And that's just a character I think is the most problematic at the moment. I think healing numbers should be brought down just a little bit and remove the self res for teammates. Other than that, Venom's tankiness could also be reduced by a tiny bit, but for the most part, I think the roster is in a pretty good spot. Again, the game isn't balanced, even with the repose changes, but Marvel Rivals has shown that it wants to lean more into the wacky nature of the game, rather than being focused on perfect balance, which isn't possible, and that's okay. The thing that Marvel Rivals does differently than Overwatch is that while there are different roles for each character, they aren't necessarily locked into them identity-wise. You have support characters that can be tanky or do decent damage, you have DPS characters that have support abilities as well, and it's because of this mixture of role abilities that I think the game doesn't need to go into role lock. As a casual game, I think Marvel Rivals has the foundations and potential to be just as big as Overwatch, especially with a heavily fleshed out and established universe that is the Marvel franchise. Competitively, the game still needs a lot of work, but I feel like I have much more freedom and options in playstyle than I do in Overwatch. Although I've talked about how much I love this game as well as my concerns, the main factor is how well Marvel Rivals will do in retaining player numbers. With everything that the beta has to offer at the moment, I think they're on the right track to making something incredible. Character balancing, more characters in general, more maps. If Marvel Rivals can iron out the current issues by the time of its official release, I think it'll be the first game to really shake Overwatch from its hero shooter throne. Not only Marvel Rivals, but there's still Valve's hero shooter Deadlock on the horizon as well. If Deadlock also proves to be a strong competitor, then that's even better news for players since Overwatch has been uncontested for so long. I'm going to be playing as much of Rivals as I can before the beta is over, but once it finally releases, I'm going to be playing as much of Rivals as I can before the beta is over, but once it finally releases, I'm going to have a really hard time going back to Overwatch. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe to see more. I'll be looking to cover more about Marvel Rivals, but until the next video, I'll talk to y'all soon.